Let's welcome Evelyn as she comes to bring the message today. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Thank you all so much. I'm going to pray. Is that all right? Now, y'all know I like interaction. Is that all right if I pray this morning? All right, let's pray. Father, we just want to acknowledge you. We recognize that you are God and our Lord. We thank you for being such a wonderful father. Jesus, thank you for not just being our savior, but our friend. And Holy Spirit, we just recognize you. And I'm asking for an increase of your presence. We know that you are already here but asking just for more. And I just pray that the ear gates are open in the realm of the spirit this morning to be able to hear what you are saying through your word. I thank you, Father, that the hearts have already been prepared for the seed to be planted in good soil and on good ground. And I thank you, Lord, for opening up our eyes to be able to see today in a fresh new way, fresh new perspective, fresh new outlook. And I thank you for doing that, Lord. And we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How's everybody doing this morning? Good? Good. Well, today we're going to be, t well, I'm going to be sharing with you about the power of meditating on God's word. Yes, I like that. Okay, I'm going to say that one more time. So today I'm going to be sharing with you about the power of meditation, but godly meditation. Meditating on God's word, amen? And so the word of God has a lot to say about meditation, um, it gives us a lot of clear instructions. It tells us how we should take part in meditation. Um, godly meditation is much more than mindlessly repeating the scriptures. Now, there's all kinds of meditation. There's Eastern meditation and West Side, South Side, North Side. There's all kinds of sides of meditation. But this morning, I'm talking about godly meditation, because that's where it came from in the first place, is godly meditation. And so meditation was encouraged in the Old Testament, and it's also encouraged in the New Testament. Lots of scriptures that speak about meditation and reading and then following the readings. When you read the scriptures, it usually follows up with um, the benefits of meditation. So we're going to talk about that too this morning. We're not only going to talk about meditating on the word of the Lord, but the benefits of meditating on the scripture. Amen. And then after we get done talking about meditation and all of the benefits of meditation, then we're going to talk a little bit about um, our thoughts because meditation and thoughts go so much together. So we're going to talk about thoughts, how they impact our emotions, and then how they also impact the way we live our life. Hence the reason why it's important for us to meditate on the word of God. Because it shapes the way we think. It impacts the way we feel. And it's how we show up as believers in our lives. It impacts our actions everything. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, okay? Are you all ready? All right. Yes, I like that. He said, let's go. So let's talk a little bit about meditation. What is meditation? Okay. So meditation is an act of calling to mind some supposition, pondering upon it, or correlating it to one's life. And through godly meditation, it purifies our life. Amen? Reading the word of God, it's focusing your heart and shutting everything else out. You know, sometimes 
we want to meditate and watch TV. You know, you got one eye on the TV and you got one eye in your word. Or you can be, and don't misunderstand me, but I'm going to break this down. We can drive and even listen to the word sometimes. And we can um, sit at home and be cooking dinner and listening to the word of the Lord. And that's great. But meditation is usually when you pull in to a quiet place into a quiet place, right? Where there's not a lot of distractions. And not that you can't get some word when you're cooking dinner and you're listening to it or you're driving, but there's something different about getting in a quiet space with the Lord. Because meditation is also not just reading the scriptures, meditating on the scriptures, but it also involves us listening. And sometimes when we are cooking and cleaning or doing whatever there's lots going on and we don't always pause to listen during that time of meditation and so I'm not discouraging you from doing that I think that if you're doing that and you're getting it in get it in you need to get it in you know you need to get the word in you but there are times where you need to pull away and have a time where you meditate where you hear the voice of the Lord meditation shows up like a rudder you know, a rudder on a, on a ship, on a sail, it kind of guides you. When you get in meditation with the Lord, that's what happens. It's almost like a, a sail that guides you as you're meditating on godly scriptures. And so it's drawing close to God and listening to him. Uh, meditation is a reverent act of worship. Yeah. Meditation is a reverent act of worship. Um, it's also the way that we commune with God. And it's also the way that we are then thereby renewed spiritually. The meditation of a righteous person contemplates God and his great spiritual truths. Meditation. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, God. Meditation. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Just meditation. Okay, getting in the word and meditating, pondering on his word. Spending time in that still place. And sometimes as you listen, ask questions like, hmm, Lord, how am I supposed to apply this to my heart? What are you saying to me in this passage of scripture, Lord? Is this a warning? How should I take this word of encouragement and apply it to my life? Should I be sensitive to someone who's around me as I meditate on this word, Lord? Are you speaking, me th speaking to me through the scriptures on maybe giving this week? How would you like me to do that, Lord? All of that is a form of meditation. Now let's look at some of the biblical benefits to meditating on God's word. Not only does it give us a clear path and it helps us to be able to follow um, after the Father, but meditation, meditation on the scripture employs you. It enlightens you about how you see things and it also brings a calm within you. Meditation accompanied with acting on God's word changes us from the inside out, right? So as you take in that scripture, as you meditate on that scripture, as you read that scripture, as you sit with that scripture, and then you meditate on that word all day long, even if it's just a verse, when you do that, then meditation begins to change you from the inside out. And as you meditate on the scriptures, you begin to learn the scriptures. And so then that's when you have something to pull from when life puts the squeeze on you. It's also a way to have something to pull out when someone else needs a word of encouragement. So see, meditation builds up our reservoir. It builds, it gets all our backpacks filled up or your coat pockets, however you want to look at it. And then when you're in the presence of people, you have something to give. And it's not just your opinion. Because our opinions, you know, they, they, they all right, but they can be biased. I want the word of the Lord. Because it's the word of the Lord that's going to change me. Amen. 
And so then that's another benefit. You get the word of the Lord and then you can give it to someone else. And so meditation, reading the scriptures, learning the scriptures, getting the scriptures down on the inside. And then when someone's having a hard time, you can be like, girl, let me tell you, joy going to come in the morning. You know, you can share the word of the Lord with them. Okay. And so meditation enlightens you. It employs you. Meditation accompanied with acting on God's word not only changes us from the inside out, but in James 1 and 25, it says the changes it makes moves us towards freedom and blessing. It says, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law, it's the word, that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what you have heard, read, or learned, but then doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. That's powerful. So it's saying not only when you meditate on the scripture, but then when you remember it, right, forgetting it not, and then you do it, it says in the book of James 1 and 25 that you will be blessed in everything that you do. That's one of the benefits to, the, to meditation. All right, the, number, the next one. Your way is made prosperous. Joshua 1 and 8. Now, you guys know a little bit about Joshua. Joshua, Moses has died. Joshua's now getting ready to lead all these people. He is freaking out. If you ever read Joshua chapter one in there, it literally told him to be strong and not afraid multiple times. You know why? Because he was scared. He was scared. He was nervous. Right. And I love that. I love. OK, sidebar. I love how the passages of scripture normalizes us. Joshua was a powerful man of God, but he was afraid. And so here Joshua is and, you know, Lord speaking to him and he, you know, he's, he's telling them all these beautiful things. And so that was a sidebar. They normalize us, David and all of his wonderfulness and cray cray. He normalizes us. Elijah normalizes us. Everybody normalizes us in the passages of scripture. Okay. We are not alone. We can be a little cray cray sometimes. It is all right. We are normalized in the scriptures, amen. God know all about it. He ain't surprised, okay? But it says in Joshua 1 and 8, the book of the law shall not depart from your... Yeah. But you shall... In it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. But you shall meditate. There's that word again. Ponder upon, think upon, sit with, hear, eat it, say it, ask questions around it. That's what that's saying. Remember that definition? So that's what it means. It doesn't mean just saying it over and over and over, but sitting with it, letting it sink in deep, asking the Father questions around it when you are meditating on it, okay? It says, for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. <laughs> That's what the word says. So when you meditate upon the word of God, one of the benefits is you, your way will be prosperous and you will have good success. Yeah, that's, that's good. The next one is you become like a tree planted and you bear fruit in season. It says in Psalms 1, 2 through 3, but he delight in the law of the Lord and in his law he meditates day and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of yeah, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever you do shall. Now, what you say? Who would have thought meditation had those kinds of benefits? That's another benefit that you become like a tree planted. You know why you become like a tree? 
Because your roots get real deep when you meditate on the word of the Lord. And so when the winds blow, and they do blow, right? Goes back to when life puts the squeeze on, or sometimes when you're not really sure what to do, you're rooted, firmly planted, not wavering, because you have some word built up in your inner man, and you can have something to pull from. And so listen to me, reading the word and meditating on the word of God, it is for our benefit. It's for our benefit. It says you get planted like a tree. And then on top of that, you're going to bear fruit because you're planted in the word of the Lord. Amen. This one I really love. It causes you to be at peace. This is the benefit of meditation. Philippians 4.18, finally, brethren, whatever things are true and whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, Meditate or think on these things. Now, when you are meditating on things that are true, things that are noble, things that are just, pure, lovely, good rapport, and virtue, you're going to have some peace. I'm not talking about when you're going to meditate on, you're going to whoop your kids and I'm so sick and tired of them and they ain't doing what I told them to do. Oh, my God. OK, because that that's going to give you something that it is the opposite of peace. You know how it is when you start thinking up and pondering up stuff and it's not the word and it's all kinds of crazy stuff. You don't have no peace when you get done. You be like yelling and mad and everybody's in the house like, what's wrong with you? Well, at least that's me. I speak for me. Because that ain't nobody else in here, you know. But when you're meditating on the word of the Lord, when you're meditating on that day and night, and you wake up in the morning and you're thinking on things that are lovely and that are pure. I'm not saying that everything is always lovely that makes you feel like you want to. I'm saying that the scripture is saying do so. Because not all times do we wake up and we think everything is lovely, pure, and all those wonderful things. Sometimes when life is happening, you'll be like, look, ain't nothing lovely, pure, just and nothing. I mean, what, you know, what's going wrong? Everything going wrong. I mean, my God, can I get a break? But he says, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Come on. Things that are noble and just and pure and lovely. Because when you live there and you dwell there and you meditate on those things, it causes you to be at peace. And I've been studying about peace, and it literally means the removal of all anarchy and anything that creates anxiety. That is what Jehovah Shalom means. So I don't know about you, but don't y'all need some peace? Okay, that's a benefit to meditating and it's so true when you sit down with the scriptures and you open them up. And if you just read it, one verse over and over, you will sense the peace of the Lord coming right there, right there in the room. You'll, you'll sense his peace. Okay, so that's another benefit. Now, I want us to read something together. Let's go to Psalms 19 and 14. And I know you guys probably don't have a slide for this. That's okay. You know, it's one of them early mornings and Jesus say, write that down and read that. You're like, and I'm like, that ain't him a slideshow. He's like, but you write that down and read it. Yes, sir. I'm going to write that down and read it. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. All right. So Psalms 19 and 14. I don't, I'm going to wait till, okay. I don't hear no pages turning. We ready? You know, y'all got electronics nowadays. You just bam and you're there, you know. 
old school, what's, what, what, where are we at? Baby, you in the wrong, you in the way in the back of the book. Come on to the middle of the book. Okay, are we ready? Let's read. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. There that word is again. Meditate. Now, that's beautiful. He's saying, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, and you know what heart means, because we've studied that the last time when I taught about trusting in with all your heart. So he's saying, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my intellect, thoughts, attitudes, all of that, let that be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Yeah. Because meditation deals with our attitudes and our thoughts and gives us thoughts like God and Sometimes we need to pull up our thought life, think on things above. Sometimes we're down too low in our thought life. And so sometimes the scripture pulls you up, pulls you up, gets you thinking on things that are above, things that are up here, high, you know, not keeping you down in the low place, okay? Now let's read one more. We're going to read Psalms 119, 97, 1 through 4. I promise I'll have y'all out of here for lunch, okay? It's one of my favorites. All right, let's read. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. You, through your commandments, make me wise than my enemies. <laughs> For they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep your precepts. I have restrained my feet from every evil way that I may keep your word. I have not departed from your judgments for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste. Sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. So in the morning when you get up, you can say, meditate. Oh, Lord, how I love your law. It is my meditation in all the day. You, through your commandments, make me wise, wiser than my enemies. And then you go throughout the day. Oh, Lord, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Through your commandments, Lord, you make me wise, wiser than my enemies. Oh, how I love your law. You see, as you read the scripture and as you read the scripture and as you read, boy, you, you might put a rap to it, fool around, have a song. Because it's good. You see what I'm saying? It's good. When you, when you start reading it and you're like, oh, Lord, how sweet your words are to me. You know, that's how I, boy, I mean, it, it's like honey on my lips. Man, you know, it's, man, through your precepts, I gain understanding. And so then when somebody comes to you and they're like, you know, I don't know, and I'm not sure I understand, girl, let me tell you something. His precepts, it'll give you some understanding. You see what I mean? Meditation, meditating on the scriptures. Now, biblical meditation brings about an understanding. It teaches us how to focus. It leads us to a life that exudes his presence in many ways. 
Meditation focuses us and causes us to be at peace. Remember, it plants us. It prospers us. It renders God-like outcomes. It changes you from the inside out. It is a lamp to your feet, and it is a light unto your path. Meditation keeps you from evil and deception. Meditation is sweet, and it also creates a lens. Mm -hmm. Here are some fun facts. Sustained godly meditation affects the brain. Okay? Now, neuroscientists are coming up with all this research about the power of thinking and meditating and how it creates neuroplasticity and it creates neurons and all these things, with the pathways, paths that you take. Did you know that? That you actually create neural pathways and those become the paths in which you take. That's why reading and meditating on the word of the God is so important. Meditation and mindfulness induces a heightened state of awareness, focus, and attention. Meditate, meditative practices. Now we're talking about godly meditative practices. Y'all hear that online? Godly meditative practice. Everybody say it with me. Godly meditative practice. We ain't talking about no crazy stuff now. We're talking about meditating on the word of God, okay? But it helps optimize how the brain, our brain, God created our brain and our resources. Now, I love Dr. Caroline Leaf, and I'm going to share a quote from this woman of God who is a neuroscientist. Dr. Caroline Leaf says, this in her book called Switch on Your Brain. As we think, we change the physical nature of our brain. So here's, let me pause for a second. So not only when you read the word is your spirit man strengthened, your spirit man is renewed, your soul aligns with the spirit man. But then on top of it, it says that it literally can change the physical nature of your brain. As we consciously direct our thinking, we can wire out toxic patterns of thinking and replace them with healthy thoughts. That's so powerful. Now, God created the brain. Wow. So when we read the scriptures and it tells us to um, think on these things, it, it's not really kind of just like, yeah, think on these things. No, he's, he understands neuroscience. God does. You see what I'm saying? He understands your brain, my brain. He understands. So he's telling you, come on, now, I want you to think on these things. Meditate on my word day and night. Because he understands the power of changing your brain. Ain't that good? And what I love about this is it says that it can, it can wire out the toxic patterns. And I'm going to talk a little bit about briefly on that. It can wire those out and put healthy ones in, godly ones in. So I don't know about you, but I need my brain to be full of the word. Because, you know, we've gone through things in our lives and we're going to talk about that. Because sometimes the things that we meditate on are not always great. And sometimes it's due to the things that we've experienced as little people. And even as adult people. And so this is telling you, when you meditate on this right here, you actually are not just strengthening your spirit, man, with all those benefits we talked about, but you're also rewiring your brain. Let's talk about thinking and thought. When it says, do not copy the behaviors and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. That's in Romans. Meditating on God's word and then walking it out is your benefit, but then he ultimately gets the glory. He ultimately then gets the glory. If you're thinking on things that are lovely and pure and just and all these things, you're more kind. <laughs> I don't know. God gets the glory out of that. When you're mad and they don't talk to me, you know, that ain't Jesus. That's not a representation of the kingdom of God. You see what I'm saying? 
And so you benefit from it, but then God also gets the glory in and through your life when you are one who meditates on the word and gets it down on the inside and then you hear it and then you do it. You see what I'm saying? You benefit and everything around you benefits. I love how Romans says, change your mind. Romans 12 and 2. It says, change your mind. It's the central theme of Jesus' first sermon. In Matthew 4, 17, now most people are like, well, he was talking about repentance. Repentance means to change your mind. Jesus challenged the people to change their thinking. Because regardless of how many times we read through this, if we don't let it get here and help change the mind, we will just simply keep imposing our biases and our labels. And that's not always helpful. So Jesus was repent, repent, but that word is it's to turn about faced, to change one's mind and go into another direction. Now, when you read this, it becomes a part of your core belief system. Okay? And your core beliefs shape your lens. Now, some of us, got all kinds of lenses going on. <laughs> and not because we can't see. How do I look? I look funny, don't I? Okay. Now, this is... We can look at this in a godly way, but then we're going to also look at this in the ways that aren't always good. Now, if this is my lens and my first one is the meditation of me being righteous. And then the second lens on here, I've been meditating on the goodness of God. And then my third lens, I've been meditating on how he loves me. So then I walk around with that. So then I see myself through righteousness. I see myself through love. You, you tracking? And then I see everybody else around me that way. Because the word of the Lord shapes core belief. And then core beliefs impact our lens. So we got thought. We have emotion. And we have action. I'm going to have my friends. Where are my friends at? They in here so they can help me fill up? Yes. So you, you, we're going we gonna to pass some things out. You get to keep these. These are for you. Now, when you get yours, put yours on. Okay? Y'all was just laughing at me a minute ago. Your turn! Okay, are we ready? So now when you get your glasses, y'all looking great. I love this. Somebody going to have to come up here and get a picture pass with all these people with these lenses on. Okay, now you, go, you get to take these home because this is going to be a reminder to you about the power of meditation because it shapes your lens. So now every time you go home and you look at these glasses, I want you to remember the word of the Lord, it shapes your lens. Okay. Okay, now put them on. Y'all looking, I love it. This is wonderful. We need to take a selfie after church with these on. Look at Chris Dow. You looking cool, girl. Look at you. Okay, Charles, I see you. Come on now, put your glasses on. Everybody got their glasses on? Now, I want you to do something real quick. I want you to look around the room and notice something about the glasses. They're, who said that? Yeah, Carrie, say it out loud. They're all different. 
Some have blue and some have pink. Some have all black, but then the sides of their glasses are yellow and pink, green, all the different colors. You see the difference? Now, why did I give different glasses? Because sometimes everybody's lens is not always the same. You see what I'm saying? Now, I'm going to talk about what I mean by that. We all grow up in different environments. And I'm going to take it a little further because I believe that environment also can shape thought. Experiences can shape thought. Now, the reason why it looks different like this is because we've all had different experiences. Now, we're going to shift over. We're going to come back to godly lens, but we're going to shift over for a minute so I can get real in the room. Everybody has had a different experience. Everybody. And some of our experiences haven't always been that pleasant. Mm -hmm. That's why the glasses look different. That's why we got to be real careful how we judge and how we look at people because we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know people's trauma. We don't know people's past. We don't know people's pain. We don't know what the environment is costing them currently. We don't know. And so pain and trauma and abuse can also shape our lens. This is why it's so important to read the scripture and to get into the presence of the Lord when you've experienced abuse and when you've experienced trauma and pain because all of that can also shape your lens. And that's why when you saw me with all these on, that's also abuse, trauma, disappointment. And I'm walking around with all those on. And so then what happens? I see through that. I see through my trauma. And I see through my pain. And I see through that. So then I feel that. And it impacts my emotional, my emotions. And then it impacts my behavior and my actions. That's why we got to be so careful. That's why we got to be careful when we look at people's behavior. And we got so much to say because we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. And so pain can also shape our lens. This is why this is so important. And you got to hold it and you got to meditate on it. The Bible says we're going to have trouble. <laughs> I know don't nobody want to say amen to that. But I'm going to say this. The if you can just grasp the concept of that, then when trouble hits you, you're not like, ah! Well, you need some friends in your life and be like, girl, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be okay, Christelle, girl. Mm -mm. I'm going to need you to pull yourself together because you know we're going to have trauma. You see what I'm saying? And so, but when you delight in the law and trouble hits you, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And you walking through the house. Do I have any walkers? Am I the only person who walks and prays and talks to the Lord? I'm going to show you a little bit of meditation, what I'm talking about. You're going through a rough season. And you're like, okay, Lord. If it had not been for you, Lord, who was on my side, where would I be? For you're going to deliver me out of the hands of the fowler. Yeah. 
Meditation. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Do I have any walkers? Now, I'm going to say this. I'm not saying you got to always get crunk for Jesus. But uh, every now and then, you, you, I don't know how you can't get crunk for Jesus when you read this. And what that means is excited, fired up. Blessed is the man. Blessed is Evelyn when I walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. When I don't sit in the path of sinners nor at the seat of the scornful. Blessed is Evelyn. Oh, I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. Meditation. Now, y'all know Pastor Bill. Y'all know him and Carla. Boy, I know they be crunk at home for Jesus. Boy. <laughs> and my prayer for Lighthouse is that that falls from the head down. That the enthusiasm and the heart of worship and prayer of our leaders, that we don't just see it, but that we get underneath let that, let that, let, let some of that oil flow down. Be enlightened by it. Because meditation on the word. Pastor got a lot of meditation because he, he, he got to preach every, you know, he, he, he been taking a break this summer, but man, he preaches all the time. So, you know, he in the scripture all the time. That's why he can encourage you. And I don't know about you. But it's not just the weight of the responsibility of the pastor to have a word of encouragement for the people. And so when we partner with our leaders and we do this and we, we also read scripture, that's another benefit. Is you lift the load and you have something to offer to the people. You see what I'm saying? You lift the load because you're meditating. So you got something. You're like the tree that's planted, firmly rooted. And so when somebody needs prayer, they don't always have to go to Pastor Carla or Pastor Bill. Or Pastor Phil, Pastor Bill, Pastor Carla, Pastor Phil. I had a little rhyme to it, you know. <laughs> or Pastor Paul, you know. And so I want to encourage you today. Delight in the law. Meditate on the scriptures. It shapes this. And this is how you see yourself. It's how you see other people. It's how you see the world. And so if you are full of this then in, and that's what's shaping this, then it changes the way you see yourself, others, and this cosmos. And so when all the world has got everything going on and it looks like everything's falling apart, you're not. Mm -hmm. Because remember, thought, meditation shapes thought. And so when the world is cray cray, literally, this is why I don't watch the news at often. Because it's so toxic t to the soul, if you ask me. I meditate on the word. Look, I don't know what they talking about, but I know what you talking about. I know you said you was coming back and a sister going to be ready. And I'm going to try to gather as many people as I can to be ready. You see what I'm saying? I can't, I don't got time to be living in all this fear. Fear is uh, not suitable for the believer. That's why we go cray cray when we are in fear. Hear me when I say that. When God created us, you guys, thousands and thousands upon years ago, long before he released us in the earth, it says he was created, we were created in his image and his likeness. That means we got all this stuff already on the inside. That's why when you read the scripture, something comes alive. 
Fear isn't suitable for you and I. It's not a garment that we are going to wear well. That's why there's all the, de the depression and anxiety and all these things because we're not, we're, it's not a garment that we're supposed to be wearing. You see what I'm saying? Now it's real. Fear is a real thing. And I'm not talking about the spirit of fear. I'm talking about just fear. Fear is a real thing, but you got to watch putting that thing on like a garment. You got to watch when it becomes your garment because that's not our garment. You see what I'm saying? So I want to encourage you. Meditate on the word. If the Bible is overwhelming for you and you feel like, oh my gosh, it's so much. Okay. Do a Psalm and a proverb. One. Just start off with one and just meditate on that one. Until you can build and stretch yourself, okay? And so, body of Christ is very important. It's always been important. But in these days, if you don't know what the word of the Lord says, you will be tossed to and fro with every wave, wind of doctrine, even the doctrine of demons so we I want to encourage you as I encourage myself because I am not exempt these are powerful and so shape them well and if you are struggling in your thought life which is real okay I've struggled in mine because I have history, things that I've endured. My thought life hasn't always been good. You see what I'm saying? I, I, I'll, I'll say it. I haven't always had great thoughts. We all at times don't. And depending on whatever your life has been, whatever pain you've endured, you may not always have good thoughts and good memories that come. But I believe in the power of the word. And I believe that when we meditate, it dismantles lies that we've partnered with in our life. It dismantles them. It, undo, he, it, it literally, it unravels them. And so, this is impacted also by this. So I just want you to turn to your neighbor and say, I encourage you to meditate on his scriptures. Turn to the neighbor on your other side and say, I encourage you to meditate on scripture. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes. And so the team's gonna sing. You ready, Debbie? Yeah. I love this song and it says, I delight. Now we just talked about meditation and we just talked about reading the word and delighting in the presence of the king. And so they're gonna sing about delighting. And then after they sing, pastor will come and he'll close us out. <laughs> 